and we are just starting with Katja Frila to give you a very general introduction to the EasyMIP project. Please, Katja, go ahead. Yeah, hi, it's nice to, to have this opportunity to present EasyMIP here. And I would just like to start directly with the main questions we are addressing by the project, and that is um, how does climate change affect natural and human systems already today, and how will it do so in the future? And so it's really about the impacts of climate change and not so much about climate change itself. And uh, this is a map um, I, I often start with because it somehow demonstrates why we, why we need a cross-sector view if we want to address this question. So this is um, just lost data from Munich Re reported for 2019. And it's, it's lost and used by, by extreme events. And only a small part is due to geophysical events that are not related to climate change. But all the others, uh, meteorological events, that's everything related to um, storms, extratropical storms, uh, tropical storms, hydrological events, different kinds of floods, and climat um, climatological events, heat waves and droughts. That's all reported here. And um, you can see, for example, that, uh, that the storms and floods are the major drivers of the damage. And um, we were just thinking, well, can we somehow explain? So from, from climate uh, science itself, you know that, that human greenhouse gas emissions have an influence on, on the intensity and the frequency of these extreme events. But can we somehow find a way to say how much is already due to how much of the damage is already due to climate change today? And could we project such a map into the future? So not, of course, saying that one extreme event will occur exactly in this place and that time, but just providing a potential realization of such a map in a, let's say, two degree world. And if you want to do so, it already needs more than one model. So if you are just interested in, in climate change, you can, you can use one model as long as you are not interested in uncertainties at least. <laughs> but here, if you, if you just wanna provide such a map, if one map, it already, it already needs different models. So you need hydrological models to describe flood events. You need vegetation models that describe uh, wildfires and um, uh, crop models to describe crop failure due to um, heat waves or droughts, for example, and many others. And we really want to be comprehensive, as comprehensive as possible, so even addressing um, impacts that are not, um, not considered by the Munich Re. And uh, usually what happens, so you, you, what you really need is that all these models are forced by the same climate, so that so if you really want to look into individual years uh, in your simulation, they, they should be, it should be the same year in all simulations. Otherwise, you cannot add up the damage, for example. And that's something we are very interesting, interested in, so in the overall integration of impacts. But usually, it doesn't happen that all these modeling groups use the same climate information, because they are just distributed around the world. and and interested in, in their individual field. And um, there are so many climate model simulations you could pick and different climate simulations you could select that usually people just select the ones they are most interested in and it looks so different that you cannot add up the damages in the end. So the main task of EasyMIP is somehow to, to find an agreement within the community of impact modelers to select specific um, climate scenarios, select specific uh, climate models, and then create at least a small set of impact simulations that are consistent across all sectors, so forced by the same climate information, but also socioeconomic information. And that is all assumptions about adaptation, future land use changes, uh, population distribution, and whatever will also um, determine the impact of a weather event or um, climate change itself. So our main task is basic, basically to sort this a little bit and um, to agree on certain common elements um, within a scenario setup and um, write a common protocol so that all modelers can follow the protocol and upload the data to our archive and then consistent impact simulations become available for, for us and the scientists, but also for, for um, other users. 
So in this regard, we are quite similar to CMIP. So CMIP is the coupled model at Enter Comparison Project. And that's the climate models. It's all global climate models around the world. It's, I think, about 30 model modeling groups meanwhile. And they also do a similar exercise by agreeing on certain um, scenarios. So CO2 concentration pathways they want to consider. And then they do the simulations all around the world and load them in one archive that other users, such as us, EasyMap, for example, can simply use the data to force the climate impact models. And we are in this regard like a smaller, the small sister of CMIP because we are much younger. So CMIP uh, is already running for 20 years or so and EasyMIP only started in 2012. But we have the same purpose to make all, all our, our simulations available to the, to the public and, and uh, professional users. And yeah, we don't wanna sit on the data but make them available. <laughs> And usually we are we are often quite stressed and on um, somehow uh, in a rush <laughs> because there are different external deadlines forcing us I would say that uh, that make us run <laughs> and mainly it's the IPCC reports so usually there's a new um, generation of climate model simulations that become available. Uh, before a new um, IPCC assessment report. And then we, we considered somehow our task to provide the associated impact simulations based on these last generation climate uh, projections for the for potential input for the, for the next IPCC report. And sometimes there are, there are um, unexpected events, like for example, the agreement for um, a special report on the impacts of 1.5 degree. Um, that was was somehow a request in in context of the Paris Agreement, where we have to re, um, respond quite quickly to uh, think about a, a scenario set up to um, to provide to extend the knowledge base addressing this question. And uh, that is what we what we then in the end do. We we decide within the community. So it's really not just a small group at PIC. So it's it's a it's a complicated interactive process with the with the modelers um, to decide on on a climate forcing data set and socioeconomic forcings and provide this for all these impact models as listed here. So prominently hydrological models, crop models vegetation models de describing natural vegetation, health models, mainly with a focus on heat-related mortality, fisheries, energy, permafrost, and we have global models, but also regional ones. And EasyMap um, always contains this one part that, that is on historical uh, simulations, really forced by observed weather and um, observed socioeconomic changes, so land use patterns, for example, and then providing um, simulations of crop yield changes, um, flood events, and whatever that the models can be evaluated, whether they are really able to reproduce what has been observed in the path, past. That is one part, and another part is always dedicated to uh, future projections, and I will come to it later, because I, at first I want to say where these historical simulations, they are not only interesting for model evaluation, because they could also be used, so the output of the impact models, so let's say flooded areas, could also be used to um, derive empirical damage functions. So if you, if you really want to project the Munich Re type de of damages in the end, you, you may need an empirical model saying, well, if this is the flooded area and there are so many people living in the area or assets in the area, then the damage is, is um, that high. And that can be derived from, from the historical Munich Re data, for example. But therefore, you need the flooded areas, and flooded areas can often not be observed directly. So it's possible now from satellite data, but for the historical period, you do not have all these observations you would need. And then the um, impact models, the historical impact model simulations can actually help to fill this gap. So you could simply use the simulated um, areas flooded instead of the observed one and then derived uh, um, the empirical damage function for the Munich retype damage projections. 
And there's another purpose, if we really want to address the first question I, I've mentioned at the very beginning of my talk. So is climate change, is there already a signal of climate change in the reported Munich re damages, for example, then um, that, that also need historical uh, simulations, but not only the ones I've described before, but an additional set where, um, where the observed uh, impacts are compared to a world without climate change. So that, that's somehow an ideal questions, question for our, our impact models, because they are able to simulate um, the impacts using the observed climate, but they could also be forced by a counterfactual data set without climate change. And then the difference between these two simulations could somehow describe what is already the impact of climate change in the historical period. And this setting is quite close what, uh, to the IPCC definition of at impact attribution, because that exactly says an impact of climate change is the, is the difference between the observed state of a system, human, natural, or managed system, and a counterfactual baseline that characterizes the system's behavior in the absence of climate change. And climate change is just long-term change in climate, no matter whether it's really in, uh, induced by anthropogenic climate change. And so that's what we also do. We also provide a counterfactual data set where we use the observed uh, climate forcing data and detrend it. So, um, so in black, you can see here temperatures, for example, in, in Europe, uh, in black, the observed ones, and then in orange, our detrended time series that is just making the observed data stationary, so removing, removing, removing the long-term trend of climate change. And this is an additional forcing data set we, uh, we, we, um, we provide to run it through the entire change of impact model simulations to address the impact attribution question. This is how the question could be addressed in the end. So you have this counterfactual baseline simulation in orange without uh, simulations without climate change, but with uh, but accounting for other changes in socioeconomic drivers. So that's why there's still a, there's potentially still a trend in the orange line just due to let's say um, advances in agriculture management if the impact indicator is let's say crop yields. <laughs> And then the, you have the observed uh, crop yields in black and hopefully a blue line, um, the factual simulations from the impact models where climate is changing and socioeconomic conditions are changing according to observations that is hopefully quite close to the black line, so really matching the observations. And then the difference between the orange and the blue line can be interpreted as the impact of climate change on historical crop yields. And then, of course, this is the, the 3A or always the A part and the B part of EasyMap is always on the future projections. And there we really use information from, from the climate sim models. So we need uh, to look into the future, it can't be observed. And we use uh, CMAP as our main source of the climate information. And we also have to think about providing future land use patterns and population and GDP data from different sources because uh, that is also a main driver of impacts in the end. And then this is again run through the, uh, the same set of uh, climate impact models. So whoever wants to participate in EasyMap can use this data and force um, his or her model by, by the data and then generate the, the impact simulations and load them in our archive. And then if, if we really manage to create these damage functions of, based on the historical simulations, then these can of course be coupled uh, to, uh, to the um, impact um, process-based impact simulations to EasyMap to also project the damages and provide a Munich Re type uh, map <laughs> for the future. Unfortunately, I can't show it now because we are not yet there. So we can't, we can't, cannot address all damages yet. We, we focused on flood, um, flood events and uh, tropical cyclones so far, but can, we, we can't address heat waves and droughts, for example. But this is a map of, of just the biophysical um, um, 
um, projections of extreme events. Um, so that's what we already have. So it's real data. And I just want to demonstrate how this data could look like and how it could be aggregated to describe here the area, the change in areas affected by extreme events of different types. So crop yields, tropical cyclones and wildfires can, for example, be covered by EasyMap and heat waves and droughts. And here we ag simply aggregated um, uh, simulations from an, an entire ensemble of impact models to different levels of global mean temperature change to ch uh, show this change. And this data is, um, so the raw data behind this is freely available in the EasyMIP archive. Usually our data has a 0.5 degree resolution, that's 50 kilometers at the equator and a daily temporal resolution. And if you are interested in the in access to the data, just visit our website there, it's described how to get there. And this is just uh, uh, the same data, just uh, average globally, so that you can re really see the trend in, in the um, population effect exposed to, to, um, um, to extreme events here, plotted against global mean temperature change just to show, provide a final, so that's my final slide, kind of um, motivation, because here you can see, well, in all types of extreme events, we are considering there's a quite robust positive trend. So it's really something we have to, to worry about and care for. And um, so that, that's, that's one reason <laughs> why we will look into it. But of course, there are other ones not, not related to extreme events. This is just as a motivation. And here again, the website, and that's, that's uh, also the end of my talk. 